Welcome, everybody. My name is Mikey Mhenna. Today, our special guest is Hussein Al Azat, who is a multidisciplinary designer, instructor, Arabic calligraphy artist, and typography enthusiast from Jordan. He founded Al Azat Design Studio in Amman and offers his services to various clients in diverse industries around the world. Hussein focuses on the re on research as a tool to empower his belief in Arabic letters, utilization in brands and products. He also emphasizes a contemporary treatment in his typographic art projects. Um, thank you so much, Hussein, for uh, joining us for this conversation all about the future of archiving. Thank you, Mikey. And uh, it's really an honor for me to be here. Uh, and thanks uh, to uh, Afikra and uh, to Tasmim Doha. Thanks to Basma for the introduction and uh, for the uh, participants in this uh, webinar. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I'm really excited for it today. Sure. Um, so Hussein, uh, I was reading your bio and the word mm -hmm. archiving has not, doesn't come up at all in the whole bio. Uh, do you think of yourself as somebody who is engaged in archiving? Is that a part of the way you think of your career? Well, uh, it's a good question, actually. Um, um, the archiving, I think it's a, it's a profession uh, that I'm still learning how to uh, to, to do it in the uh, in the mastery way. So um, I don't consider myself as an archiver and a professional archiver. archiver. Though I'm doing that um, in my also my free time, as um, uh, uh, you you know, like my project Khazan uh, Kutub Jamila, the beautiful books trove. I have an enormous collection of books, uh, mainly Arab titles, Arabic titles or some other books that talks about the, the region and the crafts and the, the culture of, uh, of the Arab world. So um, at a certain point, I have um, uh, decided to, uh, to, to not keep this uh, collection of books, this archive, keep it uh, hidden. So I started to, to make it more uh, public and uh, I launched uh, the, the beautiful books trove and it has the website and the social media. So that's uh, the beginning of, uh, of my, uh, of my uh, thing with the, with the archive. So again, it's not totally a professional full-time uh, archiving job. This is why I didn't mention it on my website. Yeah. So one thing that you did mention in the bio is that you describe yourself as a calligrapher. Mm -hmm. um, Everyone we've interviewed on this series, um, almost everyone, maybe except for one, always shies away from the term calligrapher because they don't feel they qualify. Everyone is afraid, <laughs> afraid to, to, uh, to, um, to describe themselves as that. What, tell me a little bit about your calligraphy practice and how you fell in love with lettering and, and, and drawing, um, drawing uh, letters. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same for me. I didn't mention my, uh, I never mentioned myself as a calligrapher. And um, I always refer to, uh, uh, to uh, as a uh, Arabic calligraphy artist. So I use the calligraphy in my art. Uh, I use it also in my design at the same time. Um, but um, uh, my story with calligraphy started when I was a little kid. My my father gave me a calligraphy pen. And as you know, the calligraphy pen has a tip and, and drawing or uh, writing with, with, with that pen, it gives you uh, strokes with diverse uh, thicknesses. So I enjoyed looking at, at, at uh, those thicknesses and I started uh, to imitate, you know, book covers and the calligraphy paintings that, uh, I was uh, looking at when I was a uh, little one, and um, then I uh, it becomes a hobby for me and uh, a passion. And uh, uh, I I learned that closely when I was a teen uh, with a professional calligrapher, like full time calligrapher, and he taught me the basics. And uh, after that, I carried uh, on uh, 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 this thing by myself. So I want to talk a little bit about some of your inspiration as a kid. Um, mm -hmm. You've mentioned uh, the magazine, a sort of comic magazine, Majid, as being an inspiration for you as a kid. Um, yeah. 
paint the picture. Well, you know, how much of your time as a kid did you spend reading comics and how obsessed were you with um, these objects? And did you have a, a sort of a visual fascination with them or did you also love the stories and um, love the writing? Yeah, like um, my childhood was a little bit um, uh, home to school, school to home, you know, that's my my thing, you know. I wasn't allowed to go to the streets to play with other uh, kids, football or uh, the Hahil or, you know, this marble, glass marble things, you know, the, the things that normal kids do. So I was, uh, in a way, locked down, <laughs> locked in uh, my house. Uh, my parents decided to do that for me. So uh, I have no option, you know, uh, so I, I just put my head in my um, uh, collection of books that I it, it was existing in my uh, parents' house and uh, buying uh, comic books like Majid or Basim or Ahmed even like later on or Mickey Mouse, Mickey Jeep, uh, it was like a common thing for, for uh, the kids uh, uh, back then like in the 80s. And uh, we were taking these uh, 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 publications to the school and like reading them again and the, uh, with, with other with other students so for me i felt really deeply in love with magic magazine i was literally um uh reserving my um weekly uh, uh payout you know like uh your allowance uh, yes exactly and uh, uh by uh, the, the 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 main amount for uh, from the allowance goes to buying magic magazine i was buying it from the bookshop Reading it, reading it uh, uh, my way back to home. I was literally hitting the trees and the people. Like I was really, really deeply fascinated by the magazine, by the illustrations, by the articles. It was my world, you know. Like as you know, it has a section for uh, to uh, for uh, like small quizzes that you solve the quizzes. Then you send them by mail. If you win, they will send you money. I, I won like too much money from uh, from those competitions. It was amazing, you know. And um, uh, I don't know if you want to to, uh, to talk more about uh, that thing now, uh, or because the inspirations sure. of this magazine came from one person. I will mention it. Uh, I think uh, uh, very soon. <laughs> now, in this go for story. it. Yeah, mention them. Yeah, like uh, um, I have I have it here. You know, like those magazines. Um, you know, uh, the Majid magazine, the, my, my personal uh, uh, ones, like this is one from 1988. Um, so the cover illustrated by Ahmad Hijazi, a famous Egyptian artist. Um, this one, the two girls characters, uh, Ihab Shakir, who passed away uh, three years ago. And um, this one by Ammar Salman, an Iraqi artist. So like you find Syrian and Iraqi and Egyptian artists wor working together. It's like, a you know, it's an Arab dream to see all those people writing and uh, uh, doing the illustrations. At the same time, um, you might find articles like this um, by uh, Bahjad Athman. He's a... Uh, a uh, famous Egyptian cartoonist. He was narrating his memories, you know, uh, through the last page of the magazine under the title Sadaqa Bila Hudud, friendship with no boundaries. So it's amazing, you know, to, to see those legends, how they uh, tell their stories to the kids. So uh, the main person who, who was like really, really, uh, uh, my main inspiration in the magazine is Mohideen Labad. And Mohideen Labad, he had, for example, this kind of uh, comic strip. It's called Khatir, Mukhtara Kabir. It's a donkey. And uh, uh, he always invent something, you know, and he's showing to his boss, trying to get a patent. And always the invention becomes like, uh, you know, the opposite way, it sometimes doesn't work, sometimes it has a negative um, 
uh, reaction on the boss. It's really funny, you know, like in the 80s, talking about inventions and being an entrepreneur, you know, like, or creating ideas in this creative way. So that's what Labad did. Next to that, uh, funny, like really uh, 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 comic, uh, very nice comic. We have that chapter. It's a weekly chapter. And the chapter called, as you see here, Hazanat al Kutub al Jamila. So, I, <laughs> yes, exactly. I always mention that in every time I talk about my project. Mahiyadin al Labad, the famous artist, cartoonist, designer, critique, or as he loved to call himself as a bookmaker, he loved to, to, to be called like this. He has also an enormous collection of books in his, in, his, in his library. And every time, every week, he picked one book. He picked one book from the collection and he reviewed it for us, the young children in the Arab world. So he put some pictures from the book and also he writes like uh, uh, a review to the book in amazing way. You know, when I was really a little one, I was, dreaming to see those books that he he was describing or he was reviewing and when i grew up later on i, I started to buy and to collect those books because he made my, like uh, my childhood into those books and he was like showing one or two pages from the book and telling us how amazing you know that thing so this this person this personality who can you know draw very nice lettering for the titles or make some nice ca uh, cartoons with a brilliant ideas very creative way or sometimes take uh, talking seriously about uh, uh, the, the the beautiful books that he have it doesn't mean they are old or new you know sometimes he review new, uh, new books so when i started my um a uh, project of showing my, my, my collection or uh, making my collection pop, uh, to the public. Um, I said that uh, Labad, he started this project at, magazine, at the Majid magazine in the 80s. Then the project has stopped because he moved to another things. So I, I decided to continue my master, my mentor project and do the same thing and borrow the same name, pick a book from my collection, talk about it, make you know, a highlight on the, um, the bookmaking details in this book or this publication and teach the, uh, my audience uh, about these uh, details in those books. So that's what I did. Yeah. Well, that's what I did with my Mahidin uh, al inspiration. So, Hassan, I want to ask you a question. Um, what do you think we stand to gain from archiving these books? So, let me play. The, let me be the devil's advocate. Let's say you had like a feisty, obnoxious, hormonal cousin, teenage cousin, who came to you and was looking through all your books and said, "Hassan, what are you doing? These are all so boring." These are old books, they're lame, they are not as exciting. Why don't you have Harry Potter and um, the new books on the shelf? Like, what is the point of all this? Why are you wasting all of your time? What would you say to that teenager? Actually, um, I had this experience with my son. My son, he is not a teenager yet. He's like, a, when he was, eight years or nine years old. And uh, he started to, to uh, uh, of course, he, he, he have seen my, my collection of books when he was younger, but I never asked him to, uh, or forced him, of course, to, to, to read those books or to, to even flip the pages. But you're, uh, you're a better man than me, I would force. <laughs> I, would I wouldn't force. I wouldn't force because I wanted really from from him, from him, from his side, from his uh, um, uh, uh, personal, you know, uh, uh, motivation, you know, if you want to to read them or not. So I I let him like that, and um, 
and he he started to like uh, in summer vacation at, at uh, one year he started to come to my uh, office and he started to see uh, the, those collection and at one time uh, he picked one of Majid magazines you know because he saw some catchy illustration on the cover and he started to read the story and after that he's like addicted to Majid magazines so he almost read all of those old magazines and he's now 11 and at the same time I'm buying him the new Majid magazine this is also an important thing because Majid is still um, uh, being published until the moment uh, of course there is a huge difference between the old uh, 80s and 90s Majid magazine and the current one. And I believe Majid, by the end of the 90s, beginning of the 2000s, they had, um, I would say, um, different kind of uh, stories. And I didn't like really the, 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 the way that they have done the illustrations and the drawings. But in the recent times, after let's say 2019 or uh, something like that, um, with a team of young, uh, amazing uh, cartoonists like uh, like Muhammad, to uh, Muhammad Tofi, uh, like one of his my 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 best uh, 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 inspirational living inspirational artists. Uh, so Tofi, he's now doing many uh, illustrations and. My, my son also, he's loving that thing. So he has seen the old ones and he is now uh, uh, um, uh, interacting with the new one in a, in a nice way. So for, 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 yeah. for a teen also, like if, if, he said, if he said this is boring, I really couldn't help him, you know, because uh, I, I would definitely suggest him or invite him to look at those things, shooting the light on the typography or on the illustrations, on the details. And the most important thing, those are Arab, Arab products, Arab um, ideas. Um, so maybe, maybe it will work with the team if he, yeah. if, he, if he respected that, yeah. You know, I feel like, and I don't mean to, to prod too much, but hearing you talk about it, I feel like you are, this collection that you're collecting is almost you're trying to like salvage this idea of Arabism that was presented on the pages, right? All these like, as you said, like Iraqi artists and, uh, and Syrian artists and Lebanese and Palestinian all working together, right? Yeah. Friendships with no borders, um, existing on the page with these, um, with these sort of idealize uh, stories about nature and friendship and medicine and love and and family right um i feel like somehow that that bookshelf behind you is like a glass <laughs> a glass jar that has this this uh this I idea screwed in do you feel like you're doing that as well do you feel like you're trying to keep together this dream um yeah i i know you your thought uh i understand your thought um like maybe i'm talking about uh, uh um uh about the arabism and in, in my collection or about my project in a uh a frequent way and i would say why not you know like the first sure. answer you know why not we should do that because nobody almost nobody have done that before you know let's say a young graphic designer or a young artist who's studying that important art, you know, or important uh, profession like graphic design. And like, he wants to learn about the, 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 the history of, of that profession. So it's so easy for him to, or for her to, to look at, you know, international examples from the West or from the East, you know, uh, it's so easy to find those uh, design schools or art schools around the world. But where's our own thing? Should we be neglected uh, that much, you know, and we should ignore uh, those achievements or those, um, um, you know, ideas that have been uh, produced and 
published uh, in the past. Um, I believe uh, it's so important, you know, to learn from our history to build um, our future. I, I believe in that very much. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, the project specifically. Um, how do you think about uh, how do you think about success when you think about this type of project? Um, is it are there any um, visions that you have for the project over the next five years, next ten years, fifteen years, twenty years? Um, are you going to start archiving books that are coming out today and books that are coming out in ten years? Um, are you also going to start thinking about archiving electronic versions of, uh, of publications that never actually are made to print? What is your sort of vision for the future of the project? Yeah, the, the vision uh, simply uh, is to archive and document and curate. You know, I, I call them curation uh, more than uh, anything else, you know, to dive inside the book itself. You know, I'm not... I'm not uh, totally with the uh, traditional library archiving uh, way, you know, like just uh, just have the book, put it somewhere and people will read it, which is an important thing, you know, with the technology that's available now, that's available now, you know, like uh, it's so easy to, 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 to have uh, an, uh, an electronic version of the book and put it uh, on a website and people could read it. And I have done that. Uh, for many titles, and uh, and uh, they are available at my, at my website, khazanet.org. Um, but also, uh, my my vision is to to uh, of course to get more books, to to uh, to enlarge my uh, my collection, and uh, to to learn more about um, uh, uh, those uh, artists and uh, the people who worked on the bookmaking and the publications have been, you know, like the, 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 um, uh, who's, the who's the printing press, what's kind of paper, uh, the typography aspects, you know, all of those uh, details are so important. So in the future, I really uh, wish to, to have, um, uh, uh, I really, I'm, I'm doing that maybe very soon, like to do exhibitions, like physical exhibitions. I, I have done one exhibition in 2019 and I'm, uh, uh, it was like, <clears throat> let's say a, a comprehensive, you know, thing, you know, it, it, it's uh, um, all the titles, uh, selected titles from uh, different uh, um, uh, categories, but in the, in the future, I'm, I'm planning to do more focused, you know, at one aspect, let's say um, books, uh, like children books only. Maybe this yeah. would be uh, one thing, maybe atlases, maybe maps, maybe uh, postage stamps, maybe, uh, for example, I have an enormous collection of books was were published in the Soviet Union, you know, uh, because, you know, in the, before the 1990, uh, when we have when we had two poles in the in the world, so uh, uh, the Eastern camp, you know, they were uh, very interested to to make uh, uh, to publish uh, to the Arab world their Soviet, you know, and uh, 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 literature in Arabic, you know, and those are really really amazing, you know, and uh, maybe I will do an exhibition especially for that and for other categories. Are there specific designers on that note? Are there specific designers and classic titles that maybe you have even lying around that are designers who studied in the uh, the Soviet Union? Yeah, definitely, especially Iraqi and uh, uh, Syrian artists. Uh, they have, uh, at least they passed by Moscow at some time. And, um, um, for for the books that you are showing now on the on the on the slide, those are also designed by Labad. Again, this this na this name will appear many times uh, in this uh, discussion. And uh, Labad, for example, because he has seen uh, like a plenty of original manuscripts from the medieval times and uh, maybe from the Mamluk and the Ayyubid uh, times. And he reproduced the typography, for example, from those periods in 
uh, into a contemporary poetry box uh, published by Dar ibn Rushd at the 80s, which is amazing. This is like the kind of uh, transformation journey that I do by myself for my yeah. for my design works. You know, I study also those things and I put them in my mind and re reproduce them again. There's those also the stamps that uh, uh, the oh. Labad designed uh, for uh, uh, for Palestine, and uh, you can see the, the 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 Latin typography and the Arabic one, the matching between them. Like it's an important uh, 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 design term, you know how to do that, and uh, the the postage stamp, you know, with the Palestine and the Dome of the Rock, the trees, the orange uh, fruit, the pot, the palm. It's amazing, you know. Like yeah. uh, he did that, and uh, those were like, uh, of course, they were like souvenirs, that, like not real stamps. Those like so, Lebanon so stamps, of course. Yeah. Okay, I want to ask you two questions. The first question is, I want to put you on the spot about this. Um, what are the sort of three to five easiest ways to identify a Dabad illustration? What are the way his characteristic styles where you can say, Akid, this is definitely him? Mm -hmm. That's a very tricky question. And uh, uh, I, I, I used to do it with my, with, my, uh, with my friends, you know, or with my book sellers. Sometimes I see like literally a part of, of, of a book on the shelf. I don't see the whole book. Then I, I will know, okay, this is a bad book. And this is a book that I don't have also. Like, uh, uh, for example, those books also, th those were like a new, a new addition to my, my collection. And uh, um, if you want to, to, to see, um, this guy, he really took care of every detail of bookmaking. For example, the spine for him is so important, you know? So as you see the spine on the, on the right side, it's, it has two colors. And with the other box, of course, it has uh, many colors. So when you, when, you, when, you saw, when you see those books on the shelf, like they are maybe 20 or something, you will see a spectrum of colors at, um, you know, matching colors at same, let's say, theme or palette. So... When you see that on the shelf, you you will immediately know that okay, there is um, a man or a, a person who who know what he's doing, you know. Yeah. So that's but the first thing. First, how thing. could you tell that these these stamps are Labad? Um, the Arabic typography, because this is like a, an ancient Kufic script. Almost no one have used it before. Uh, I'm talking about the colored ones, and. Uh, uh, the matching with the Latin typography, with the circle. This is his style, you know. Like he he used to do um, the 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 typography in a clear way. Uh, at sometimes, like in, in this example, and I could tell also the 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 Arabic uh, uh, fine print on the stamp. It was made using letter sets, uh, um, dry transfer letters. That's an, that's also a, an old way. Of of uh, um, putting using typography and designs in the past, so I I could tell that from his collection because I have seen many works sure. of him done in that way, and of course I have read his articles and the, and the, uh, yeah. how he treated those things. Yeah, those also by Labad. This <laughs> is also a very interesting example, you know, of 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 the illustrations like um, uh, the one on the left. Uh, it resembles the Labad in the in the at early time, like in the seventies or maybe in the end of sixties. Those are like uh, books published by Dar al-Ma'arif in Cairo. While uh, so you can see he has an affection uh, with uh, international, uh, let's say, um, these uh, um, illustration illustration characters. Yeah. So this guy looks like Mario, you know, uh, with the mustache, but. In the 80s, the one on the right, now he's now like a bad character and a bad way of, of drawing. I think it has been more, uh, 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 let's say, uh, grown up, you know, and it's more also he, he, he matured. 
Yes, exactly. And he delved into the Arab character. You can see the tarbush, the, the shawarib, and the, the circular big eyes, relatively, you know, um, the birds, the flowers. Labad always insert floral and uh, small elements like from our environment in his in his work. So I could oh. tell this is Labad. Okay, I'm going to ask you another question that I didn't ask you beforehand, so you didn't prepare for this. So I'm going to put you on the spot, Hussein. Um, what are the three to five favorite objects you have in your collection? Um, collection, uh, favorite objects? Yeah, books, things that you've, you have in your archive. Mm -hmm. um, I have many things like, uh, as you see here, I have album covers, uh, like this one, Farid Atrash. It's there. You I really like it. it. I you can't see it. Yeah, go go go. Choose a couple that you like and bring them back. Let's see. Let's see them. Okay. So um... <laughs> you're tempting me with the background, Yanni. I can't not ask you about them. Yes. So this is Farid Atrash. You know. Why do you I'm... like it? Um, I think uh, the designer who made that. Um, okay. The designer who made that. Um, he tried to make the cover more interesting than Farid Atrash picture himself because <laughs> <laughs> haram he was Moby like in his last days. <laughs> so um, so he designed that cover with, you know, this Diwani script with uh, this funny uh, Latin uh, type uh, with those floral uh, frame. Uh, so yeah, this, this thing, you know, to have really a vivid and living uh, contrast uh, with and still like Arabian elements reproduced for for such a, a musical uh, purpose. So this is one of the th nice things that I have. <laughs> okay, what else? Um, I have also this one. It's another book and this one. I have many things, of course, but um, yeah. <clears throat> I will start with this small thing. I hope you can see it. So it's a paper clips pack, and it's a shakalat in Arabic, and it's made in Jordan. You know, this is maybe from the '60s. A country like Jordan, uh, when we talk about consumption culture or uh, manufacturing culture or uh, so in which side we are going. So in Jordan in the 60s, they were manufacturing those really nice paper clips. So they put them in a nice pack and they have everything on the label. They have the Arabic text and they have the English, the number and the, the, uh, the count, how many paper clips there. And it's made in Jordan. This is one of the nice objects that I have. Um, another book that I have, actually I have many books about the Arabian Nights. I have, I have maybe 10 or 20 versions of Arabian Nights and uh, most of them are Arabic. And uh, uh, each publishing house or each, uh, you know, because it's a public domain, so everyone could publish that every time. But I have this special one, and it was published by Matab uh, al-Shaab in Cairo. And uh, uh, the, the, the stories themselves, they were arranged in a, in a, in a nice way by Rushdi Saleh, Egyptian author, and the illustrations done by Hussein Bikar, one of my favorite artists. So it's really nice to see uh, those illustrations done by an Arabian person. You know, yeah. I'm not totally uh, like, uh, I'm not here to be like uh, biased to Arab or not Arab, but, but you know, we, we should do that exercise. It's like, uh, it's our duty to do that before anyone else do. Can we see a few of the other illustrations? Yeah, of course. You can tell I only read for the pictures.
So that's uh, that's another one. Wow. Do you know where this was printed? In Cairo. In Cairo. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, and the uh, same Bikar. Uh, also, as a personality, I have been following his work. You know, uh, he has published a kids magazine in the year 1952. Maybe it was the first, maybe the first Arab kids magazine. And uh, uh, Labad himself, he learned from this magazine, and he learned from Hassan Bikar. You know, and uh, the the um, Hassan Bikar, maybe I shouldn't mention that, but he was from the Baha'i uh, religion. So he wasn't totally, um, um, you know, um, like not everyone wanted to work with him for a reason or not, for a reason or another. But Hassan Bikar, he 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 left in Egypt and he dedicated his life for art and for design and for books and for illustrations. Uh, and he died in the uh, 90s. Mm. And uh, he was a great mentor for people like Labat. Amazing. Thanks so much for that. Thanks for uh, entertaining me, humoring me with that. Okay, we're going to do the quick Q&A, then we're going to open it up. We have a couple questions in the chat. So the first question is, what are you reading or watching these days? Um, of course, I, I'm, I'm still reading my books. I'm still reading. Uh, when I talked about uh, um, uh, uh, Labad and uh, uh, his works, and uh, um, I wanted to, to say that uh, um, I keep reading Labad um, works like uh, that he used to publish in Majid magazine then this guy, he has like a very organized mindset, you know, and uh, every time he finished those chapters in the Magic magazine, he used to publish them in books. So that's one of the books that he used to do. And uh, I was reading this book for my kids on uh, the weekend and uh, like on Friday. This and, is the t-shirt uh, design book. The t-shirt design book. Yeah. This is like really amazing, you know, like, by, by the end of the 80s, you know, before anyone else in the Arab world thought to make Arab designs for t-shirts, yeah. this guy, he made like over, uh, how many? Around over 30 designs, 30 concepts, you know, with uh, rationals, with concepts, with, with, with uh, explanations, and all revolve ab about the Arab visual culture. This is an amazing book. And uh, the other question, watching. Um, I watched in the year 2012, a documentary called uh, uh, Jiro, the, uh, the dream of the sushi mm -hmm. uh, maker. Yeah. yeah, it's a... Um, uh, yeah, it's on Netflix. Yes, the dreams of sushi, by, uh, Jiro. So I watched that in 2012, you know, during the Arab Spring and like everyone was really depressed or uh, I was depressed. Uh, maybe some people were happy, but um, uh, so this guy gave me like a great push, you know, and uh, um, before we started this uh, Afikra uh, thing and uh, the invitation uh, for the talk, I was having another rewatch and I was really amazed, you know, by the things that um, after 10 years of watching this documentary, um, uh, the amount of, of love that this um, uh, sushi maker uh, showed to his, um, to, his, uh, to his craft, you know, he's an artist more than a chef for me. Um, and uh, the other thing that inspired me in, in, uh, uh, in the documentary that uh, Giro said he will do that with no retirement and uh, i noticed that yeah myself i will keep uh doing my things like doing uh, providing my graphic design services uh, uh, designing new typefaces and talking about those those words basic based on my archive based on my collection of books so yeah no retirement 
يعطيك العافيه الله يعافيك Okay, so let's uh, do the rest of them quite quickly. So who would you love to shadow for a day, past or present? I know what, I know the answer to this question. <laughs> yeah. But I, I really would like to be also not in the bad shadow, but a same Bikar shadow. Yeah. I wanted to see that guy, how he left before, uh, before Abdel Nasser time, you know, in Egypt. Yeah. How, how does the life and the, 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 how's the, how was the atmosphere, you know, and the vibes. Cool. Uh, and what happened later on? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. What do people most misunderstand about your work or about archiving? Yeah, about Khazan Kutub al Jamila. Some people, uh, I got that all the time, you know, uh, when I publish or uh, a story or a, a post, people immediately said, okay, how much? Like they want to buy it, you know, and uh, it's a misunderstanding, you know. I, I, I understand or appreciate the, the the love that people shows to my to my uh, to my collection, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's not for sale. It's uh, yeah, yeah. Those, are, those are my 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 valuable uh, things, and uh, until the moment, no, I'm 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 not uh, I'm not selling them. Yeah. The other thing, I uh, if we want to to talk about a little bit about it, um, uh, it's not only you know. Uh, everything old must be uh, might be nice. So um, people sometimes bring me their personal collections of books, or sometimes they mention my name somewhere. You know, okay, there's an old book. Um, yeah, not every old book is is good. It's it's a it's a good resource. Maybe it has a mistake. Maybe it it wasn't done in the night in the in the in the nicest way, but. Um, There's also a misunderstanding, you know. Um, so even the the book, the old one or the new one, they should be uh, done in the in the correct way. So on what basis do you choose to archive something? Are there crappy old books that you're like, this is not worth it. This is not worth the 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 um, the shelf space. Yes, I'm I'm running out of shelves, by the way. So uh, <laughs> uh, because I keep. buying and the buying process itself it's like yeah it's it's joyful you know because i buy them by, by myself when i uh, from from the cities that i visit or in amman sometimes i i buy them from uh, online sources from online sellers and sometimes i, I get in bids you know online bids and uh, biddings and uh, get those books so Um, yeah, the book should be done in, in, the, in, the, in the best way, you know, from the, the bookmaking yeah. criteria. And um, uh, most of my collection, uh, uh, at least the, the one uh, in the Instagram, those are the examples, uh, the leading examples of, of, the, of, the, of the books. But at the same time, I have, um, I have collected um, really badly designed books, badly drawn badly written or sometimes the books have really um, misleading ideas especially for the uh, young readers so i have a shelf i usually don't talk about it uh, online uh, but the people who visit uh, the library the the, uh, the space i show them this shelf the, sh the shelf called the shame the shame list <laughs> <laughs> so it's really shameful titles from the arab history of books and uh they are they are here you know i i buy them you know i, I spend money on those things and i allocate shelf for them because every time i thought like yeah the, these are the bad examples that we should avoid and they are yeah. in the past they were done like in the 80s and 70s before the computer age you know like with manual uh, uh uh treatments but they are very wrong and we should Uh, sometimes you know you, you learn the good thing by knowing the bad thing. So I have those okay. examples. Also. Cool. Okay, we got two questions in the chat. The first is from Arshi. Arshi, if you want to unmute yourself, you can ask your question. Hi, Christina. Hey, hi. Amazing to have you here. You. Um, my question was: How do you navigate issues of copyright? Uh, trying to publicize and digitize these books, which is I, as I understand, a concern for books from the 80s and 90s, specifically. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, 
Yeah, the copyright uh, thing is 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 really an important uh, um, matter, and um, for for the books that I have, and uh, I I wanted to to publish them all. You know, I to make an e copy of them and make them available for people to to navigate and to read uh, in in the, on my website. Um, those books usually are uh, by um, uh, a publishing house called Darfat al Arabi, and this publishing house was closed in the uh, 1994, I think. So I believe that we we can we can uh, uh, at least publish them uh, digitally. You know, I'm not doing reprints uh, of them. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a it's a it's an important thing, and um, yani, um, I hope that we can find a, a legal way, and uh, uh, for that uh, uh, a legal a clear way, you know. The the other book that I have also in my in my uh, uh, collection of um, uh, full books on the website. Uh, is also by Dar Ma'arif, and uh, uh, I believe also uh, uh, it's an old one from the 60s. So I believe it's it's uh, we can after like 50 years we can uh, do that at least digitally. Great, thanks, Arshi. Yeah. Okay, our last question comes from Besma. Besma, take us away. Hey, Hussein. So my question is about Muhyiddin al mm -hmm. uh, When do you think? there will be a book or a retrospective exhibition honoring him. And uh, would you be interested in, in pursuing that yourself? I would like to. And uh, I have uh, contacted uh, uh, his son, Mr. Uh, Ahmed. And uh, I think, uh, like everyone know that story, not like uh, uh, Mr. Ahmed Labad, he wanted to do that for, for his father. And I totally respect that. So uh, I can't do it uh, by myself, you know, without taking uh, his, his his son permission. And uh, uh, on the other hand, um, uh, the I think in Cairo Comics, um, 2017 maybe or 16, uh, I can't remember. They had a section. Uh, hon honoring uh, Labad uh, and uh, his character Ustad uh, Zaghloul. Uh, but for myself, I'm I'm open for uh, uh, even to help Ahmed Labad because I think I believe um, I have a great collection of Labad work. Even some uh, small articles he wrote for Sabah Al Khair magazine or small illustrations in Rosal Youssef. Uh, even I have a small caricature he done for a, 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 a German magazine. Uh, so I have I'm following this guy uh, as his shadow, you know. And uh, and uh, I have uh, uh, a great collection, and I'm open to collab collaborate with uh, with uh, with anyone who wants to do so that. I wish to do it, but I can't. Great, thanks, Basma. Well. Um... Hussein, thanks for letting us to dive deep into this uh, treasure trove, as it were, with you. I really appreciate that. A uh, huge you. thanks to Tasmeem 2022. The conference is just around the corner. And this a huge, huge thanks to Liwan, which is also in Qatar and is also opening in March. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. This will show up on our YouTube page and the podcast tomorrow. So be sure to share with all of your design friends and archiving friends and folks who grew up reading Majid magazine, just like everybody else. Yes. All right, Hussein, thanks so much. Thank you, Mikey. And uh, thank you for Africa and uh, for the uh, supporting parties for this event. Thank you so much. Mikey. Okay, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.